Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, including the stuff from Chilling Rain, make sure you go ahead and check out the Town store. You can get a 5% discount on your order using that code Omnipoke. For today's video, I'm going to be going over my Evolving Skies buy list. We've already done a, a ton of content on Evolving Skies. Uh, there's a set review, there's um, a tier list, there's impact of rotation, all that sort of stuff on the channel. So make sure you go ahead and check that out. But today we're going to be talking about what I believe are going to be the core essentials. These are cards that are expected to be involved in tier one or two contenders or have obvious future potential. So let's start off in the top left of your screen where we have both Leafeon and Glaceon VMAX as well as Snowleaf Badge. If you're looking to get either of these two VMAX archetypes, you need the Snowleaf Badge because it removes weakness as well as retreat cost from both of these Pokemon, which is really nice. Um, the Leafeon, I'm not going to go too much in detail with these sorts of cards, but the regular V gives you energy acceleration uh, on your first turn, which is nice so you don't miss energy drops. And the VMAX does relatively good damage based on uh, retreat cost of Pokemon. Um, so you can try and buff that with Galamine. You may have to play out to um, Air Balloon, have some tool scrappers and stuff going on. But I think in general, this is a pretty consistent uh, two-hit KO style deck that hits for weakness on Umbreon, which is another great card from this set. So that's its main payoff. The Glaceon is an annoying walling style deck, just like Zamazenta. Uh, but in this case, we have acceleration from the likes of Melanie, maybe even uh, Frostlass. Uh, alongside scoop up nets because you want to play net with the new pump kaboo anyway um so yeah glaceon is going to be a decent walling archetype for sure uh let's quickly touch on the pump kaboo that's over here seeing as i've just mentioned it uh i feel like this is an important card just for everyone to be getting uh because it's a ball searchable way of having an out to path of the peak now i'm not sure many decks will actually play this but i can foresee the likes of shadow rider which is playing fog crystal uh Glaceon and like Zamazenta may want to play this alongside Scoop Up Net. Glaceon for sure because it doesn't have a better stadium that it could be using anyway. Uh, and Scoop Up Net works with the likes of Inteleon and Frostlass. So definitely synergizes there. I feel like you only need to pick up a couple copies of this like common card. So it's not going to break the bank at all. Going back over to the bottom left of your screen now, we have the Galarian Articuno. This is a great card if you're going to be looking to play Shadow Rider decks going forward. Uh, it's a great way to buff that damage because you can put it straight into play with a couple of Psychic Energies. That's its ability uh, and it doesn't count for your turn attachment. So yeah, extra way to buff the Shadow Rider itself or Alcremie, whichever way to help you reach knockouts. Then we have the one-off copy of Medicham. It's a Rapid Strike Pokemon, so it's really good in the Urshifu uh Inteleon based build where you can set up math with the likes of GMAT's Rapid Flow and Quick Shooting uh, to buy yourself an additional turn, which is really cool. You could also consider this one of copy uh, if you are playing um, Ice Rider as well with Inteleon because they can do a very similar thing and buy yourself that turn in that regard. Also, to allow yourself just to basically have free quick shootings the following turn to again help you reach numbers on certain Pokemon. So, not a card to be slept on, even though it's just a one of copy. Then we have uh, the Rayquaza VMAX, only really. Um, want these sorts of cards if you are going to be playing Rayquaza itself. Uh, now the Flaffy is that little bit more versatile. You may want to pick these up just because it's going to be a good card in general. You do not need to pick up the Mareeps uh, because there are 70 hit point Mareeps, I believe, in Chilling Rain. So better than the ones that are getting in the core set. You may also want to get Stormy Range just for that future potential, even if you're not playing Rayquaza because it does, you know, serve a great purpose for Lightning and Dragon Pokemon in the future. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, you may just want to pick up Flaffies in general uh, for future reference, but only really pick up the Rays if you're looking to take them uh, on as an archetype for yourself. Uh, we have a couple of Raihan. This is going to be just one of these cards that I think when you're playing the likes of uh, Altaria, when you're playing the likes of Drizzile, um, even to an extent if you just have Eldegoss, it's a worthy one of including a number of decks uh, just for that little extra energy attachment. Um, it's going to be really good for a lot of these one attached per turn based VMAXs just to help you play around Hammer that little bit better uh, or just missing that energy drop means you can catch up later on with a Raihan, which is kind of nice. Uh, and even things like uh, Urshifu could consider it to allow yourself to double G max Rapid Flow now that we've lost Karate Belt. So I can foresee it being like a one-off in a number of these decks that have tutoring. Zinnia's Resolve, similar deal here really. Uh, good for some discard synergy uh, style decks where you want to start bidding some stuff early like Rayquaza for example um, and it helps you just grow that hand size and I think again when you have Altaria when you have uh, Drizzle at your disposal you can cherry pick this for when it's more useful potentially than the likes of Amani or a Research so you may just want one or two copies to pick up three is the absolute highest end I think we will never really need to play a deck that has more than three Zinnia's Resolve 
Crystal Cave, um, it's a good card in general, but I think it's mostly good if you're looking to play Zamazenta Slashization style decks, and I would put that as a four of, because right now they need to play Search Esther Bath, and it's, you know, this is a strict upgrade to that sort of deck. Uh, so if you just want to play a Zamazenta style walling deck, this is going to be a great stadium for you, because you need to have outs to bounce path of the peak. Uh, we have a new uh, Flapple, and you do not need the new Applin because there is the old Withdraw Applin, which is uh, the best one. Um, it has the same attack as old Weavile, the Evil Admonition, and it's just a level ballable, one colorless energy attachment style attacker, which I think more and more I'm getting convinced of in this format. I think there's a lot of decks playing abilities, so I'm actually saying it's a core essential card because I can see 1-1 one -one lines of this with the amount of level engines going around being a valid include to try and skew that prize race. So yeah, I would pick up a couple of these as well. Um, the Altaria is a really nice um, ability as well, allowing you to, to put a supporter on top of your deck. Works really nicely with Suicune, which I'm a huge fan of, as well as, you know, Cincino and a few other drawing cards. Even just in general, helping you play around Marnie and having a draw to sort of win the game the following turn. If you're just planting things like Boss's Orders to the top of your deck, that can be a really useful option as well. So Altaria, again, pretty nice. It has free retreat. It's levelable, searchable, just a good utility card in general. Uh, then we have really the big hitters. I'd definitely be picking up a couple Suicune no matter what deck I was thinking of playing. Um, you can go for more copies if you want to. Obviously, I think two is kind of the sort of minimum count I would want to put in an Ice Rider. That can increase just to improve your, you know, opening where you have additional good basic Pokemon to attack with. You could even be seeing Suicune focused decks uh, around this new Altaria engine and you have Swift Runner to just insta draw those supporters and we may play a toolbox with Suicune now uh, with different Aurora type coverage style Pokemon like the likes of Zapdos and Moltres and that sort of thing. Uh, I do believe Suicune is a strong enough card to build around completely so you may want to go all the way up to four copies if you really believe in the card uh, like I do but I think if you're just looking to play Ice Rider 2 is a very safe number and uh, if you're thinking of some sort of boxy style decks, you may not need to get the full four copies either. And then I'm going all out on a four for Umbreon. Now, you don't have to be a believer in the pure single strike Umbreon based deck, although I kind of like it as well. I feel like it could be a tier two contender where we actually attack with this Umbreon. But in general, I really like that fit count because you can be pressurizing that boss's orders effect on turn two via this ability. Um, and, you know, we don't have as many good outs to our evolutions anymore. We don't have communication. So having to max out these copies alongside Evo Incense is going to be a really important thing, I think. Um, or potentially even like Manaphy engines I've been uh, experimenting with, if you can believe that, going forward. Um, so this Umbreon is going to be really nice in the likes of Victini, potentially Ice Rider, um, Eternatus, and its own potential deck. So 4-4 four four is the very thickest line possible, but um, I feel like it's fairly worthy. You can go as low as 2-2 two two to pick up these cards, but I think the earlier you can threaten an Umbreon, the stronger the effect gets. So I would definitely look to get a thicker line, in my opinion. Then we have the Believer buy list. These are cards that may prove themselves to be mid-tier contenders or have a good amount of potential. So again, let's start on this top left where we have the Jolteon VMAX. The Elemental Badge reduces um, the colorless cost of this Jolteon. I believe this is the best of the bunch between the Flareon, the Vaporeon, and the Jolteon uh, because this is able to do some good snipe damage. It also has free retreat on the basic and the evolution, which is very cool. It does potentially have Cheryl synergy because you can just cost the one lightning and have the um, badge as your other attachment effectively. Um, so you can try and dance between these if you really want to. I feel like this could be a partnerization dex uh, because 230 plus the 100 and 100 setup on a potential other VMAX could give you a really easy path to victory with that Zacian, even if you are just playing something like Fort Aurora in that build um, to fulfill that lightning energy attack cost. I really do think that could be a viable option. I did try something like this earlier on uh, in Battle Stars format, actually, when Urshifu VMAX first came out. I tried Urshization. Didn't quite work out, but I do believe there is more synergy here with Jolteon uh, because you have inbuilt free retreat which uh, was a big factor actually of why the Urshifu build uh, flopped in a way um, so I do think there could be a second coming of the Jolteon uh, Zacian style deck now I'm not believing in it so much so that it's going to be a tier one or two contender I just want to test it out a lot uh, more so I will be picking up some Jolteons I think it's a very cool and flexible card um, but there are a few hoops that you have to jump through to get it working. Uh, Volcarona could be a finisher, potential Victini VMAX decks, and it certainly has potential for fire decks going forward, seeing as though we basically lost all of the fire support um, very recently to rotation, um, and 
they will eventually re rebuild fire support in one way or another. We don't really know how that's going to act out yet. But if more fire decks start sprouting out to this Volcarona, it could be a great finisher for you. So I'm not sleeping on this Surging Flames attack. I think it is a potential good finisher in fire decks, even if there's not a home for it right now. Uh, then we have the Sylveon. Uh, the Ribbon Badge reduces um, the prizes that your opponent takes by one on the V and the VMAX, which means that this is a 310 hit point two prizer, which is pretty scary to deal with. Dream Gift um, is a nice ability just to make sure that you're not bricking the entire game uh, to end your turn on that sort of effect and allow you to get into bull search essentially for the uh, for the following turn most of the time. Um, it's a psychic type rapid striker. Um, it does cost three energy, so it's a little bit expensive, but I can foresee this being partnered with the likes of Urshifu, with the likes of Blaziken, uh, potentially Octillery trying to stitch that whole thing together because you want to play different type coverages to uh, increase your damage output with the Sylveon. I think that's really going to be the build that we go for here, but it is multiple uh, stage one Pokemon and it makes me that little bit nervous. Then we have Duraludon. You don't need to get the regular Duraludon V unless you want to be building around Stormy Range. And I believe to make this awkward attack cost work, you probably want to be playing the Gatling Slug Metal type uh, Duraludon that we got in a previous set. So make sure you keep your eye out for those. Um, I, th I can't remember what set they are uh, off the top of my head. But yeah, uh, the Metal Duraludon is certainly the better one. Um, and you may want to pick up a couple of Dragon Fang Scrolls as a big potential payoff, in air quotes, uh, for playing Duraludon. Uh, the only real reason you'd want to play this card is if you think Skyscraper is a good enough ability in the format, if you think there's going to be enough special energy around that this actually becomes a big bulky wall. It does have no weakness, which is nice for a, you know, walling style of deck, but as we know, no Bronzong variant has really been successful up to now, and if you want to use things like Houndoom um, to help you get along with your sort of attack cost that will be damaging your big wall which makes it far less appealing so uh yeah i think overall draladon isn't going to be a top tier contender it's that little bit too clunky because you need to draw things in specific orders where you get you know your rapid strike energy once you've evolved but you've already used your sources when you haven't evolved so this that, and the other means that it's going to be that little bit too much work in my opinion then we have a number of uh, one prize Pokemon. I actually really, really like this Elder Goss. Again, you don't need to get the Gossifleur because there is, I believe it's a Sword and Shield base Gossifleur, which has the core family attack and it gets you three basics out uh, for a colorless, which is one of the reasons why I really like this card because going second means that you have this opener as Gossifleur, even if you just play four copies of the Gossifleur to actually get your uh, basics into play, which can be really helpful um, for the decks you want to play this in because I'm foreseeing it in going into things like Cherim decks uh, because it then scouts out all your energy for you quite easily and helps you chain your attackers which is something that uh cherim decks have struggled with up until this point so this could be a really nice card for that sort of deck um the ability is honestly so good i could foresee this card going in other builds uh I, we just need to wait and see on this i even want to try out an elder Goss build of shadow rider i'm that convinced by the early call for family style attack um that i want to you know only give up a one prize Pokemon in the active position and Gossifleur could be that card. Uh, then we have uh, Reggie Drago. Uh, it's a potential combo card with that Cherim as well. I think the combination of Reggie Drago and Eldegoss uh, could fashion a new way to build that sort of deck where you play a couple of fire energy, a lot, a lot of grass energies, and then just have the Eldegoss to pick at them when you need to to help cycle this uh, one prize Pokemon. Reggie Lecky, only if you want to play a one prize box of Flaffy. Uh, Ludicolo, again, you don't need Lombre or the Lotad because we have a top entry Lombre, which I imagine will be the build around for this to try and make it a, in air quotes, fake stage one card that buffs the damage output. I think really the only attacker that I can foresee this working with at the moment is Zacian, uh, but there's much better ways to play Zacian, let's be honest. So that's a gimmicky way to play it. Then we have Jump Bluff. It's able to attack twice and you can try and combine this with some interesting, um, Rapid Strike tool cards, but I think in general, it's going to be that little bit underpowered. Uh, it's regular attack just a 60 vanilla. Uh, so even when you're attacking twice, it's not doing too much. Uh, so yeah, I feel like we, you know, it may, may be some fun to try and build around because it's not a real stage two because the skip bloom uh, can cheat these jump clubs into play that little bit easier, uh, but still quite a fragile card in general. Zorark is certainly one that I have my eye out for the future. I feel like there's not a home for him right now, but this is, you know, this screams potential, this sort of card. So if you just want to get them in the binder, you certainly can. Milotic for a similar reason, um, because this could be part of the Zoroark sort of combo where your opponent can't touch your hand, which is always a nice state of affairs to have when you are trying to build or fashion towards your own control style combo. Your opponent not being able to disrupt that is going to be great. 
Uh, the Moltres and the Zapdos are far less powerful than the Articuno, even though they basically share the same effect, but for their own respective types, uh, there just aren't so many easy homes for these sorts of cards. I feel like the Zapdos is best served with like a Galarian Surf Fetch, potentially. The Moltres, I'm not really sure what home this has right now, uh, because Eternatus will just probably use the regular V for the most part for acceleration in the back. And then we just have a number of these sort of lesser good trainers that I still might get for the binder. You know, these aren't going to be too expensive ever. Rescue Trolley, only really good for some levelable searchable engine style decks. I feel like most stage one decks are going to be below par right now. You know, the one prizes. Um, so the trolley doesn't really have much of a home, but it can be nice for some of those sorts of builds, especially if you are playing like uh, Cincino, that sort of thing, or Drizzile engines or whatever. This could be a good way to get them back if your opponent's picking them off early on. Vigor Shake's one of these cards that at the moment only combos off of um, Galarian Weezing, but if we get any new targets for it, it becomes a far, far stronger card. For example, if we had an item locking evolution um, that we have seen cards like that in the past. So Vigor Shake's one for the binder, I think. Fashion Mall is actually a pretty okay card. Uh, I can't foresee many top tier decks playing the card, uh, but there are some archetypes that simply don't have a good stadium that they can put into play. And they're basically having a toss up between Fashion Mall and Turfield Stadium. Uh, and sometimes Fashion Mall just wins out if you want to go kooky with a few different uh, combinations of tools all in one deck where you play balloons, toughness capes, you know, tool jammers, those sorts of cards. Uh, a Fashion Mall could be squeezed in. And finally, Copycat, I feel like it's a far worse supporter than a lot of other options right now, uh, especially with the likes of Raihan, Birdkeeper, um, Zinnia all becoming like one-off cards if we are going to work towards these Altaria and Drizzle engines. I feel like Copycat is low down that list. But just in case we get into a situation where Shadow Rider, for example, is one of the most popular decks out there and it really starts to accumulate a large hand size, there may be some precedent to play like one Copycat just for that exact reason that you can tutor it on the right turn. But there we go. That is my Believer and um, Court Essentials buy list. Let me know what you guys think. What are you going to be forking out for? Uh, what new archetypes are you going to be looking to play? For me, I am really sold on Umbreon. I'm very sold on Suicune. And if the Leafeons don't get too expensive, I probably will keep an eye out for those because it seems like an archetype that's kind of up my street, really, because it's just one of these decks that kind of chills out. <laughs> you get yourself a free attachment so you can brick and still be doing stuff, which is kind of cool. Let me know your thoughts down below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in another video tomorrow. Cheers.